This video is designed to help you get ready for the chapter six test. This is going over the practice test we did, test B, um, so you can see the answers. Uh, the test on Tuesday will be very similar to this, just with some different numbers, but same types of problems. So I'm gonna try and go through some of these pretty quickly. Others I might take a little bit more time with. Number one, write 24% as a decimal. All you gotta do is take where the decimal point is and over two. So you're gonna end up with 0.24. Write the decimal uh, 0 0.71 as a percent. You just take it over two and you get 71%. And 13 over 50, all you have to do is divide that, say 13 divided by 50, that gets me 0.26, move the decimal over two, and I get 26%. Number four, and uh, for these that are on this page, I'm gonna use something like uh, the proportional method where I have A, which is part over whole, equals percent over 100, and I can figure out, if I know uh, all but one, I can figure out what I, what I don't know. What percent is 25 of 25 is 6? So 25 is my whole, uh, 6 is my part, equals the percent over 100. And it's going to be 25x equals 600. I divide each side by 25. And so x, or my percent, is 24. 24. Okay. Let's look at uh, what number is 48% of 75. So 48% of 75. I'm just missing the part. So it's 100. A equals... 75 times 48, divide that by 100, gets me 36. 70% of what number is 35? So 70 over 100 equals 70% um, of what number? 35, 35 is my part, so I get 70W equals 3,500, and when I do that, 70 uh, divided by, or 3,500 divided by 70, that gets me a whole of 50. Next one, 24 is what percent of 50? 24, uh, let's see, uh, 24, 50, the percent is what I'm missing, so it's going to be 50p equals 2400, and when I divide each side by 50, my percent is 48%. One more, move this up a little bit. Uh, 36 is 18% of what number? So I got my 18, that's my percent. 36 is, 36 is the part of what number? That I don't know. So we have 18x equals 3,600. I'm gonna divide each side by 18. It gets me 200. Here are two, uh, two questions where we're finding the increase or decrease uh, percent. And we remember we need to round it to the tenth of a percent. So find the difference. Divide that by the original. Okay. So for number nine, I have, uh, it's going up. 
and the difference between 50 and 36 is 14. So I take 14 divided by 36. That gets me 0.38888. That says round it to the nearest tenth of a percent. I'm going to make this a percent, so it's 38.8888. But I need it to the tenth of a percent. So this one here, tenth of a percent. I look to here, that's an eight. So I go over 38.9%. That's number nine. Number 10, we're going down. Oops, I gotta make sure I show that that's an increase. This time I'm going down from 98 to 80. So the difference there is 18. 18 divided by the original, 18 divided by 98, that gets me 0.18367, and so on. Oh, that's a three. Okay, move it over two, it gets me 18.367% to the nearest tenth. I look over to the six, it tells me to round it up, so it's 18.4%. And this one is an increase. Oh, they're both increases. Hmm. Okay. No, 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 no. I'm sorry. Percent of de decrease. It tells me that right there. And I know I'm going from 90 to 80. So percent of decrease is 18.4. All right, number uh, 11 is finding the uh, percent of error. And remember, to do that, you need to find the difference. And you divide that by the actual. Not the original, but the actual. So you estimate that there are 56 marbles in a jar. The actual amount is 71. So I'm going to find the difference of that. 71 minus 56. That gets me 15. And I have to divide that by the actual. Well, the 56 is what I estimated. The actual is 71. So I do that divided by 71. 15 divided by 71 equals 0.21126. Um, and this one we're going to round to the nearest tenth. Take it over to 0.20. Oops. 21.26%. One, two, six percent, round it to the nearest tenth. The two tells me I just stay at the one. So my answer is 21.1% of error. All right. Number 12, 12, you find, you need to find the sale price of a $50 item after a 20% discount. So, you take the original price times what you have to pay, and that will get you your sale price. So on this one, um, I'm looking for find the sale price of a $50 item after a 20% discount. So I know the original is $50. It's at a 20% discount. I'm gonna make that into a decimal. But that's not what I have to pay. What I have to pay is 80% of the item. 20% is free, so I pay 80%. So it's 50 times 0.8, and that gets me Forty dollars. That's my sale price. Number thirteen. Uh, I didn't get a picture of it, so I'm just gonna read it and then figure out what it is. Find the original price. So I gotta find the original price times what percent you have to pay. And that's going to equal your sale price. So 
It says, find the original price of a fitness watch that is 105 So the sale price is 105 The discount was 30%. And X is what I don't know. Now, this 30 isn't what I have to pay. That's what I didn't have to pay. So it's going to be X times 70% is going to give me the 105. I'm going to make that into a percent or into a decimal. 0. 0.7 equals 105. That's 0.7X equals 105. Divide each side by 0. 0.7. That gives me X or original price equals 105 divided by 0. 0.7 equals $150. So that is my original price. All right, number 14, finding the selling price of a $70 item after a 30% markup. So we have uh, an item that the store paid 74. It's gonna be marked up 30%. So I'm gonna times it by 100 percent plus 30 percent and that will give me my selling price now if i add 100 to a 30 percent that's 130 percent so it's 70 times 130 percent equals selling and i'm going to make that into a decimal 70 times 1.3 equals selling and I just type in 70 times 1.3, and that gets me $90. Nope, not 90. Sorry. $91 is the selling price. So the store is going to make $21 on that. Number 15 is a simple interest question. So we need to know that simple interest equals principal times rate times time. All right, you deposit $200. There's my principal. So I'm going to put the 200 there. Uh, the account earns 6% simple interest per year. So that's my rate, 6%. Um, and then what is the interest here? earned after two years, so times two equals my simple interest. So I do 200 times, make that into a decimal, 0 0.06 times two. 200 times 0 0.06, that gets me 12, times two is 24. So my simple interest is $24 after two years. And then what is the balance? So the balance is always the principal plus what you earned in interest. So it's 200 plus the 24. That equals $224. 224. Number 16. Okay. Another interest one. Interest equals P times rate times time. You deposit 400. So that's my principal. The account earns $16 simple interest. So that's the interest. In two years, what is the rate? R times two. And two is in two years, so I'm good there. So I'm going to do 16 equals 400 times two is 800. R, divide this by 800, divide this by 800. My rate is 16 divided by 800. 0 0.02. I'm going to make that into a percent. I'm going to go over 2. So 2% 2 is my rate. Just uh, putting it in the formula and using algebra to solve. Here's another interest question, but this one is talking about how long. So this must be the T. So interest equals principal times rate times time. That I think we're going to be missing. Okay. Uh, principal of 400 earned $60 interest. So that's my interest. Um, 
annual rate of 3%. How long? Don't know, that's my T. So 60 equals 400 times 0.03 times T. So let's do 400 times 0.03. That gets me 12 times T equals 60. Divide that by 12, divide that by 12, and that gets me T equals 5, so 5 years. All right, number 18, 40% uh, of a number is X, okay? So I could do this like setting up as an algebra, 40% of, which is times, some number, I'm not going to make that X because we have X um, already, so I'm going to make that as N. 40% times a number, we'll call that N, is means equals X. Now, assume that the number is greater than zero, okay, so this can't be a negative, we'll just keep it as a positive. I need to figure out what n is. So make that into a decimal point. F oops. Point o. Oh no, I was right. Hmm. I take this over to point four times n equals x. So I divide this by point four. Divide that by point four. And n equals, so remember, in front of every variable, there's a number. So it's 1 divided by 0.4x. So if I do 1 divided by 0.4, n is 2.5 times x. And that is my number. My number is 2.5 times whatever the x is. And this question, it's um, simple interest, interest times principal, times rate, times time. And we want to find out the difference between A and B. So uh, bank A, or account A, I should say, is, um, and we're looking for how much less interest do you earn. So the I is what I'm looking for, times P, um, that's my x. The rate on the first one is 4%. And it's annual, so it's times one year. So interest equals x times 0.04 times 1. When I put those together, it gets me 0.04x. So that's the simple interest I get for account A. Account B is interest equals principal times rate times time. The principal is the same X. The rate now is 2.5%, and the time is just one year. So interest equals X times, make that into a decimal times 1. So my interest equals 0.025x, and that's for B. Now the difference, I'm going to do 0.04x minus 0.025x, and that's going to get me 0.015x, and that's my answer. All right, 20, we have to order these from uh, least to greatest. Okay, I'm going to make them all into a decimal. 30.2%, that equals 0 0.302. One third into a decimal is 0.33333 forever. And then I have 0.3131. And
and that's already a decimal. Now I'm going to go to the smallest. They all have a 3 here. Then I have a 0, 3, 1. The 0 is the least. So 30.2%. That's the least. And then this one has a 1 here, and that one has a 3. So then it's going to go 0 0.3131. And the greatest is 1 third. And that's the order I put them in. 21 is identifying the percent of change as an increase or decrease. Okay, so um, I could do uh, 3 divided by 8. That is 0.375. Oops. 375. And let's see if 11 divided by 16. That equals... 0.6875. So I have two numbers that are terminating, which is good. So then I want to find the difference between these and divide it by the original. So I'm going to take 0 0.6875 minus 0 0.375, and that gets me 1, 2, 5. And I divide that by the original, which is 0.375. Let's see what I get. Divided by 0.375. That gets me 0.8333 forever. Now, I want to find the percent of change and round to the nearest tenth of a percent. So I'm going to make this into a percent. 83.3. 3, 3, 3 forever percent. It says run it to the nearest tenth, which is right there. I look at that. So it's 83.3%. And we are going from 0.3 to 0.6. So we're increasing. And that's what we get. For this question, I'm going to use the proportion... Uh, way, which is um, part over whole equals percent over 100. And when I'm talking about part, it's how many are in the class, and the whole would be the capacity. So, let's look. Classroom A has a capacity of 50. So that has a capacity of 50 and is 70% occupied. So I want to find how many students are in that classroom. So, I go 50 divided by, or 50 times 70 and then divided by 100, it's 35. So, classroom A, 35 students. Now that's important to know because um, this whole thing didn't copy, but it goes on to say that the ratio from A to B is five to three. So I wanna figure out if I have A to B, and I know the ratio is classroom A has five and B has three, now, if classroom A has 70, no, that's the percent. If classroom A has 35 students, how many does B have in it? So, 3 times 35 divided by 5 equals 21. 21 students. Now, so I know B has 21 students in it, and that, it tells me in the problem is 25% occupied, 25%. So I'm not sure what the capacity is. That's what I want to know. It asks me how many students can fit in classroom B. So that's my X. So I go 25X equals 2100. 
divide each by 25, and that gets me 2100, divided by 25, gets me 84. So my capacity is 84 students in class B. I'm going to label this as students.